Woody Allen's Decades in Film, a podcast about the incredible filmography of one of the most prolific and most controversial filmmakers of our time. From Red Nexella Studios, A and B in Hong Kong, we are your hosts, William Melvin and Q. Hello, everyone. This is a What Would He Do? This is a <sighs> podcast on uh, Woody Allen's films, and uh, this is our seventh episode. Uh, th- you are with William Melvin and Q, and uh, I I don't know how to open the show because I'm still processing this thing. Uh... <laughs> so Q, take it from here. Oh my God! Uh, I did not expect how heavy this movie would be. Um, so okay, so again, uh, this movie is called uh, Interiors, and this this was released in 1978. It's a number of firsts for Woody Allen. His first drama, his first quiet film, his first movie not to feature himself as an actor. So this rich study of characters revolves around uh, the character Eve, a mother, and her three daughters, Renata, Joey, and Flynn, and her dealing with her husband marrying his new wife, Pearl, very soon after their divorce. So with just that synopsis, you can see how... Funny. Very... It's very funny. <laughs> it's very Woody Allen. It's you know. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. You go to the theater. You say, oh, "I'm gonna have a good time. This is gonna be a Woody Allen film. I'm gonna laugh Thank my you. ass out." <laughs> Can I just but, say that yeah. after you watch this film, you you are guaranteed to want to have a drink. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I think I need one right now. Um, I also need to see something really, really stupid. <laughs> I was, I was telling you because, like, the, here, because again, this the the concept of the show uh, to our very loyal listeners, like they follow us, right? And 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 I'm and we're very happy that you do. And uh, thank you, it, thank you. It, it it inspires us to really just uh, do this uh, every week. And uh, well, the concept of this show is that Q doesn't know what he's going to be watching next. He just knows about the, I think just the title, right? You just yeah, know just the, the title. The, yeah, just the title. He doesn't pre-research the films. No. Doesn't prepare for anything. Uh, so, so like you know, he's uh, he, he he totally went in cold, and uh, he's getting off the movie cold. <laughs> <laughs> yep, uh, I feel my, my my balls have shrunk to a to a record level. <laughs> yeah, well, we're yeah. just trying to keep things light here. I would say th- this is the most fun I've ever had watching a very very Sad unfun thing. movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, in 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 so many words. Uh, what the word sad just encapsulates this movie it's it's uh-huh. it's a lot of degrees of different types of sadness and of different yeah. types of complicated themes oh my god uh i have not you know how woody allen discussed different f- facets of sex in everything you always wanted to know about right. sex Right, right. Here he basically unpacked to the viewers <laughs> just varying degrees of sadness and grief. <laughs> like, everyone has problems. Everyone yeah, has yeah. issues, right? It's like, you know, that could have been the tagline of this one. <laughs> everyone has problems. Everyone has issues. Interior all inside. <laughs> one house. Interior. Interiors, Interiors. repression, (laughs) unpacked. (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, um, I remember Matthias's uh, email, of course. Like uh, he he sent us an email at what would he do at gmail dot com. After listening to our podcast about everything you always wanted to know about sex, uh, in which he detailed his um. His views on how the media climate mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. in the 1970s, right? So he included a line there that uh, I blurred out uh, when when I showed Q the the email because it would have spoiled this film for him. Uh, he said, "You know, uh, 
you know, we, we, your your laughter and your giggles are contagious. <laughs> but I guess I'm 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 not gonna hear much of that when you cover <laughs> interiors. But I guess he's wrong. We are trying to just like keep it light here, but it's 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 very heavy. I, I think this is one of his best films. Like after after I saw this now for the third time, I think this is. This is one of his best films. I I, I would think so. I mean, I've only seen seven. <laughs> yeah, so, so far, right? Yeah, so yeah. far. So, yeah. Uh, this again, as this is the first film I've seen of. I think, and this is the first film of his that he didn't star in, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, one quality of the film that I was trying, uh, that I was telling William earlier, uh, was that there are it felt like even though Woody wasn't physically acting in the film, it it felt and sounded like he was embodying the characters. Obviously, right. I mean, he's directing it. Yeah. But he's, he wrote it. And yeah, and he wrote it. Yeah. But there's something to be said with how the lines were delivered and how... You know how, you, at least in comparison to like the, the earlier Woody Allen films that I've seen, he has a he has a manner of speaking, and it's right. very unique. Yeah. So there are conversations in this film where it he could have stood in <laughs> with, everyone. With, with every one of the characters. But it would have been a comedy. <laughs> yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly, and it wouldn't have had that uh, that much. <laughs> depth and that much sadness right, right. had he done that yeah. but that's how it felt and so I, I was writing my notes and <laughs> it's uh, one of the lines that I wrote down on my notes it's like it, it sounds like it's Woody Allen uh, even if he didn't cast himself and it feels like it's Woody Allen having a conversation with himself I am theorizing some factors mm -hmm. uh, and, and we talked about this during our watch party and after our watch party, um, I was telling Q that this this film really is inspired by, you know, theater. He was inspired mm. by uh, number one, Chekhov, Anton mm -hmm. Chekhov, the Russian playwright, and Eugene O'Neill. And um, having acted in some Chekhov plays, uh, I, I kind of noticed this pattern that the English translations kind of sound like that when mm -hmm. you it, it, they kind of read and sound like that because you know if you translate it from Russian, there's a tendency that you translate it the way you think in English, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, every one of us speaks uh, differently. Right, we're using Correct. the same language, but you know the the, the, the words that we use and the thoughts, yeah. how we construct our sentences, that subtly differs mm -hmm. uh, for everyone. And I think that's a, it's not a problem because you know it, they sound beautiful, but when you try to emulate an English translated Chekhov play, mm -hmm. there's a tendency that you do the same thing. You know, because you, you'd imagine like, you're, okay, I'm writing a Chekhov in, inspired play. And then, you know, you, 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 <laughs> the next thing you know is that they all sound with a rhythm and pattern yeah. as, as you wrote it. Correct. And I yeah. think that happened here. And also, up until this point, I think Woody Allen was carrying the, the, films, the films by himself. Yeah. You know yeah. the lines are all you know the all the key ideas of the films were still delivered by Woody Allen. Like even in mm -hmm. Annie Hall, you know he's, he's yeah, sharing yeah, yeah, yeah. the spotlight with Diane Keaton. But the key items of the of the film were still carried by Woody. And Correct. this is his first, uh, I would say, ensemble piece. You know mm -hmm. where he has to divide. All those ideas, like distribute all those ideas into a number of characters, and mm -hmm. that's I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. it's like this. Yeah. My my yeah. question, I think, is that at first, when you noticed this pattern, did you think of it as a negative thing 
at that point? No, I don't think it was a negative. I didn't. I didn't really find it negative. It. I. It. I just found it curious, and uh, okay. I like that it was there because I mean, those are the. That's basically the highlight of any Woody Allen film. Conversation, dialogue uh, yeah. is all. Is always the the highlight, and right. I was surprised, pleasantly surprised, that even though he wasn't there. It felt like he was. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, right. right. <laughs> and it it completed kind of like the Woody Allen feel of the movie because it's still a Woody Allen film. I kind of know the body of work, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and looking back, you know, for someone who's who's seen most of the Woody Allen stuff, this is gonna be normal. It's a normal venture. <laughs> Because Woody Allen's fiftieth film is going to be shot soon. He's gonna oh, start yeah, filming in August. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay, he's okay. gonna start filming in August in Paris. Wow. Uh, so so Woody Allen fifty is is uh, on the horizon, and if for some reason the Woody Allen fifty is gonna be as heavy as this one, no one's gonna be surprised. <laughs> no one's gonna be like, oh my god, yeah. he's, like, he's doing this again. <laughs> no one's gonna say that. But in in nineteen seventy eight. You could just imagine how people would have reacted. Um, of course, the critics love this one. Um, I'm sure. You, you're you're going to read some reviews saying that this is probably one of the greatest films ever made um, in 1978. But understandably, the audience were dumbfounded. Um, yeah. A lot of them, a lot of them, you know, criticized the lack of humor, obviously. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, number one, the lack of Woody, yeah, which also translates to the lack of humor, right? You know, you go to a Woody Allen film to see Woody Allen being Woody Allen, and you see a film by Woody Allen, and you don't see him, and you don't hear that familiar nihilistic funny voice in there. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. just nihilistic this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. I think this has the same effect for me, for me, because I'm I'm a big fan of Robin Williams. Oh, so yeah, yeah. This film has the same effect to me, except that Woody Allen isn't here. But it had the it had the kind of like the same effect as me watching one hour photo of Robin Williams, which yeah. was super not funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Oh, you're gonna see Robin Williams in the in the Woodyverse. Yay! <laughs> yeah, I'm a big so, Robin Williams fan. Before we continue today's discussion, we'd like to invite everyone to follow us on our channels and social media accounts. What Would He Do podcast is available on Spotify, Anchor.fm, and other major streaming platforms. Yes, you can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. All you have to do is visit our homepage at www.williamelvin.com slash what would he do for all our links. Or you can email us and we'd love to have a quick chat with you at what would he do at gmail.com. This is where we really, really get deeper into the filmography. I mm-hmm. would think, you know, because Annie Hall, we've just talked, uh, we just talked about Annie Hall. And uh, Q was always saying, you know, he has to see it again after he sees the the next movies, right? And yeah. you know, he's he's waiting for the uh, the additional insight. You know, when he goes back to Annie Hall after seeing this, yeah. if you go back to Annie Hall tomorrow, it's gonna be like you're gonna see new things in there, and you're oh, gonna of course, feel of it, course, like, kick of course. in a little bit more. I'm on uh, the IMDb of interiors and uh, mm. there there's just a mix of like different reviews here which is which I find funny I was reading uh, one of the synopsis here in IMDb and here the the person who wrote it says said that Eve is an incredibly negative woman and this has had a toxic effect on her children and I don't think so I disagree with that despite her uh, insecurities with a lot of the characters in the movie like her insecurity with her husband because they're going through a divorce her discomfort with some of her daughters I didn't think she was negative I just think she was trying to find where she fit in 
in this yeah, whole this, scheme right. of things. Yeah. Maybe it resulted in her character giving off the air of negativity. But uh-huh. I didn't think she was toxic. This movie felt too close to home. And as a viewer, as, a, as someone who watches it, it kind of disarms me to, uh, to a degree that it made me feel uncomfortable watching it because it's so real. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, all, a lot of the themes in the movie, like uh, <laughs> I, I, was, I was telling Will that it was shot on a super warm tone and everything's just shades of beige and tan mm-hmm. and brown. <laughs> but what I notice is it's, it's all visually warm, but it contrasts with the themes the themes which are very cold. Folks, we're talking to a g- visual designer here. <laughs> Q is is a visual designer in uh, in his professional life, right? And yeah. the way I saw it, and we may be using different terms for the same meaning, sure. right? The way I saw the colors, they're very muted. And yes. that made Maureen Stapleton's arrival in red Correct. pop out. Very correct. Yes, correct. Right, yeah, uh, right. I think it was. I think it was deliberately made to look bleak. But what I'm saying is, because of the themes of like warm tones, like the 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 lighting is very amber. It's very mm. you know. It contrasts the themes and how you know how Renata's character was always at uh at each other's throats with her husband yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. frederick frederick yeah. and eve was always kind of trying to win arthur back so it's always that kind of struggle visual tone like warmth is supposed to make your audience kind of feel uh uh the effect is supposed to be nurturing it's supposed to be right to bring you in i think that has a lot to do with uh, gordon willis the cinematographer he returns here uh, he also did annie hall people call him the prince of darkness and this is one of the examples um, <laughs> it's always dark but there's light seeping in from somewhere and that gives you the homey feel of it, it it's more insi- it's very insightful that it's called interiors because a lot the majority of the scenes are shot inside with yeah, yeah. like a lot of windows but yeah, instead yeah. of it being there's a there's a term in filipino uh, it, it's maaliwalas it, uh, yeah, it yeah. kind of feels uh, airy homey that yeah. sort of thing but instead of it imparting that feeling the vertical lines there's there's a scene uh, that i really really liked where uh, Renata was walking down the staircase, and then it was a shot of uh, the staircase juxtaposed against the window. So it looked like bars. Oh yeah, right, right, right. I really like that visual that it, they, all, they have a lot of shots where they're just uh, looking out the window, and it feels like it's prisoners looking out into a better right. world. Right. So it, 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 it kind of brings in imagery of being trapped and it it goes around though that sort of theme where it's it's a lot of trapped and repressed emotions that yeah. they 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 don't impart with the rest of the characters right even even the you remember this long one take scene where they were just like walking along the beach yeah flynn and renata even yes, that yes. long scene and uh thank you again to william miller who who gave us the the Woody <laughs> Allen film guide books. It's Woo-hoo! very very helpful. That scene is two minutes and twenty three seconds long, just mm-hmm. one take of them just like Woody just wow. tracking mm. them, and, nice. and you, you just hear the voices from afar. And even that yeah. scene had the bars, like the fence yes. has yes the yes. visual b- bars in this thing. Not only the visual themes. In, in in this one are top notch like even even the thematic representation of everything in here mm-hmm. just like it just falls together in one really really solid piece uh, for example you know you said that uh eve is a displaced character right yes and yes. when you look at where the beach house is mm-hmm. it's in new york but it's like it's very very far from the city <laughs> Right, it's, it's, like, remo- you know, it's in New York, it's, yeah. but remote. 
Yeah. Right, right. It's a remote part of 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 New York, and you probably have to like travel very very far to get there. And you mm-hmm. know that feels like Eve. That's Eve, and yeah. she's an interior designer, uh, by profession. Yeah. And she decorates her house like with such stark emptiness, and it's like you you know that those things just feel so solid in this one. Yeah. And mm-hmm. one thing that I realized in this journey is that I'm finding new things in these Woody <laughs> Allen films. You know, I'm almost rediscovering things as as, as you they, do as for the along. first time. So it's yeah. Just... I'm sure we, we're we're gonna be able to unpack a lot of those in a second or third rewatching of the film. But I mean, he discussed themes of obviously suicide, and you mentioned mm-hmm. earlier off air that um, <laughs> it's it's such an I- ironic portion where uh, Eve kind of ran out of. <laughs> Of yeah, duct tape to block the the gas. Yeah, and 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 it, it's such a quiet. I mean, it's all a, everything is a quiet struggle. The fact that they didn't use any music except for that yeah. one scene. We are musicians, and yeah, we find power in music, and this yeah. is power Without. by not using it. It's all just muted and quiet struggle, and people just being trapped in their own. Kind of worlds because they're they're uh, the characters. I mean, Renata is a brilliant, talented uh, poet, and yet mm-hmm. she's her struggle is that she can't be honest with her sisters. Yeah, right, right, and her mother, <laughs> and, and her mother, her husband. Yeah. She's not a very honest person all throughout the movie. Right, right. right. <laughs> and then there's, I mean, obviously uh, there's Joey's character. Actually, she's not. She's the least repressed of of I think in in this movie that she expresses he tries yeah. to express herself but she lacks all of the talent and all of the brilliance of her sisters. So Flynn is a, the successful sister who yeah. seemingly has no problems, but she's always fleeting. She hardly yeah, makes right, it right. to any of the events, and then she has no real relationships, and then she has that oh my god that that visual of the rape scene it's uh oh yeah yeah that's okay. that's super oh heavy we, we haven't talked about that yet but <laughs> perfect segue to that is that every every acting in this movie is yeah. grade a you know no oh, one's yeah. like left behind here mm-hmm. richard jordan as yeah. uh frederick the most of the confrontation scenes like the louder ones in this movie mm. are from diane keaton and richard jordan right Yes, yes. But it's still very much contained. And people who are not used to watching like art house movies and stuff would... Actually, I don't know how people would react. Like, you know, um, you're used to seeing dramas being big, confrontations being loud, and, you know, very physicalized. Every emotion is just underlined, you know? I am angry. I am yeah. frustrated. And this is just like... If if I was teaching an acting class, this is probably one of the movies I would recommend. Don't you think because they removed the music, it because you know how music emphasizes and elevates a lot of emotions, but That's because true. they removed that element, their acting, the acting, the scenes, the dialogue kind of took a step up because now you feel now you feel the genuine emotion now you feel the yeah. grit now you feel yeah. the 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 just the underlying subplots that they wanted to for you to feel uh, it's not embellished by any yeah. sort of like rousing music there's no manipulation of that sort here exactly like, yeah you know so, you're, you're you're seeing real people in real situations it just comes across <laughs> like very very effectively i this film is a wonder. If n- now you understand, we've been watching Woody Allen for the past month, you know, month and a half <laughs> now, and yeah, it's like yeah. you know, I think for you, until now, it hasn't occurred to you yet why he's like one of the most influential you know, directors, legendary, yeah, influential directors yeah. in 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 Hollywood at least or in America. 
and it's just like this shows you how yeah yeah for sure how that uh, came to be so be because i've seen his movies in succession from the first i did not expect how heavy this was going to be i mean i kind of had the idea because annie hall wasn't particularly happy <laughs> right there's no soap being fashioned yeah. into a gun yeah. yeah 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 i mean it wasn't it wasn't particularly silly uh yeah. which his earlier comedies were uh but i didn't expect his film to be this dark and sad and emotional this this movie is is emotionally exhausting <laughs> it is yeah it is in in all the right ways right like yeah, it, yeah 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 he hit every note like you know he wanted to he wanted to make you feel this and he hit every note yeah i mean i'm 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 almost going to say that this movie is emotionally traumatic mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's it's almost that but i mean just uh, just the visuals and particularly that scene uh joey was talking to her to her mom in the beach house and mm. then she ran out and then it's just her running out into the open water waves crashing and because there's no music you only hear the crashing waves you only hear the screaming you only hear and that's why it, it kind of felt so close to home because you don't have a backing track when yeah. these things happen. Yeah. No rousing <laughs> emotional music in there. No. Like, that would have really killed the movie, right? Like, if you see, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. But Such. the deafening silence of it. And then to be followed up with that ending scene where they're just looking out into sea and they're saying, the water is calm. The, the water is calm. It's so. It's just a beautiful thing, you know. That's that's the last line of this film, right? Yeah, yeah. The water yeah, is calm. Exactly, exactly. With the Bergmanesque picture yeah. of the trio three of, of, the, of the three sisters. Yeah. Ah. If you're enjoying our discussion, another perfect companion for your Woody Allen film marathons is the Woody Allen Pages podcast at www.woodyallenpages.com. It's a great resource for film-by-film -film details that would surely add to your Woody Allen viewing experience. So check them out! Oh, I, I forgot to mention that the original title for this film was Windows. <laughs> Windows Before... 11? Windows 10? <laughs> Windows, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know why he, why he changed this. Uh, perhaps he just thought it's, like, it's very on the nose. I think good, good thing that is a you better, just mentioned that. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's I, a better. I, just, I think interiors is the better title. Perfect. I agree. For this I film. agree. Yeah, I yeah. agree. But I, <laughs> I just read uh, in the trivia that apparently it was Diane Keaton's suggestion to change wow. it to. <laughs> wow. <laughs> to interiors. The, yeah. The sway Diane Keaton has over <laughs> Woody. Right? You know. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Oh. But if, if if you were Woody Allen, you'd listen to a Diane Keaton. Right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Diane is sitting in front of you. I think you should change the title of this film to something like Interiors, maybe. Oh sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently, so someone w wrote here that the film was originally to be called Windows, and Windows. Yeah form a visual motif as we as we've seen in the film yeah however diane keaton suggested that the film be titled interiors instead which woody allen felt worked better so yeah. there you go well, yeah <laughs> <laughs> there you go there you go yes yeah, <laughs> thank you diane keaton how amazing is and, and, and here's the thing like you know it really showcased everyone as an actor right correct and yes. after seeing annie hall you see Diane Keaton in this, like, as you said, she's not as, you know, conventionally the Diane Keaton, lovely, beautiful, pretty uh, yeah. girl here. And it works so much, you know, she's, she, there's no scene where she's not holding a cigarette. And, you know, it's just yeah. like, it, it's, it's so solid, like everything. 
I, I and I think you'd agree with me. This is where it kicks in, right? Like full full yeah. throttle. We can talk about this film for like hours and hours, and you know, unpacking oh, yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, and and we are going to talk about these films again in our uh, decade retrospective decade special. Decade retrospect. <laughs> which is coming like in 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 the next two episodes because the next film would be Manhattan from 1979 mm-hmm. and then we're going to do the decade retrospective until we enter the 1980s which is uh, which is a totally different league uh, on its own and uh, how do you feel so far Q um I suddenly <laughs> I suddenly feel sad <laughs> no. <laughs> no um I bet as I mean I I'm not going to go back to what I what I said before. I I was trying I was expecting Woody Allen to kind of like took a took take a turn to a ser- to a more serious tone. Uh and that is that is exactly what happened. I mean I I I'm I'm loving I'm loving this this uh journey uh because I never could have imagined such 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 a wide scope of different genres and different things that uh that movies can make me feel. <laughs> yeah. And this yeah. coming from one person directing it. So cuz I mean I'm 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 as I've as I've mentioned in earlier episodes, I'm 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 the type of movie goer who watches Michael Bay and you know yeah, that yeah, that that's that, that, that yeah. and Fast and the Furious and those 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 movies are a dime a dozen. And yeah. you know how how these filmmakers. I mean, no, no, not to not to throw shade at them, but they they only feature a certain type of movie. Yeah. And this one, I mean, Woody Allen's uh, experience with his filmography. Just you know, I'm 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 starting to see how and why he is one of the. One of the world's greatest filmmakers. So yeah, I'm looking and, forward to to the the extension of this journey. I mean, I'm still waiting for that really bad Woody Allen movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that, I, you know, not not to spoiler anything. That that's gonna come really really later on. Because I I remember I was I was watching uh, uh, a podcast the other week uh, with uh, with one cartoonist. I think mm-hmm. I think he's a comic book artist named Rick Worley. When you think about Woody Allen's filmography, you know you you could mm-hmm. say that, that yes, of course there is there are bad ones, um, but it's like looking at a Bob Dylan discography. If someone wrote "Blowing in the Wind" and that's gonna be like one 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 big hit for you, and you're you're yeah. good for the rest of your life, right? But Bob Dylan did that for like. 50 60 songs right and <laughs> yeah. that's just how Woody Allen was you know he made 49 films and he probably made 20 classics you know he did <laughs> yeah, he did exactly. that over and over and over again this is the start of a very exciting journey for you because uh I was keeping it until this point right from from Q you know I never gave him the title of the film where it turns and now yeah. he's been he he just saw it and i was very excited for this man and i was i was i was telling you before we before we started watching the film like prepare yourself like this this is it <laughs> welcome to something was i think <laughs> as i described it the 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 thing that should excite a new viewer like you is the way he would blend these serious and comedic elements in the future that's what's going to make a Woody Allen film you know I'm sure because we've yeah. been we've been talking about like Annie Hall because it's still majorly yeah. funny right it's still like yeah it's still a in a broad sense it's still a comedy but yeah. this is where it turns and you know he's he finds his footing from from here on out mm. and uh, that's what we're going to see 1979's Manhattan is next For for Manhattan, I would I guess I if I'm gonna take it from the title, it's going to be about New York, New York. <laughs> <laughs> which is every other Hollywood movie. <laughs> yeah, even the Avengers was about New York. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> even the 
even the e- even the MCU is like centered around New York, so it's like no. But 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 kidding aside, this is why I want to veer away from the you know from the review scores bit yeah, from yeah. now on, because like you know it 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 really doesn't matter from from now on. It's like this is not a a conversation of enjoyment. You know, this yeah. is a conversation about like the substance of the film, because like Correct. you know, if 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 I ask you like, did you enjoy interiors, and you know, it it enjoy is such a wrong word for yeah. it. Like you know, it's like you don't enjoy something like that. So it's like you know, it's 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 such a wrong thing to like score it like out of ten, which I mean, you know, in my in my opinion, it's like that. So it's yeah. like now it's gonna be a conversation about what. What's the impact of the movie for you emotionally? Yeah, I think. exactly, exactly, exactly. And yeah. I think, I think I'm gonna treat all of my movies moving forward because <laughs> I was just telling <laughs> William, uh, be- because I came, I all, I, I, I watched all of these movies, like all of the Woody Allen movies that I've, I've seen so far, without any kind of like prior and and uh, expectation, and I've, I've never seen a trailer, I've never seen whatever. Yeah. I think I'm gonna treat all of my movies like that moving forward because oh yeah it it, it just enriches the experience. So I'm 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 assuming we're not gonna score this any we're not gonna give we any are not Woody's going to score this, this. <laughs> yeah 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 no more Woodies from now on it's gonna be it's gonna be purely uh, discussion of everything and you know it's good because because I felt like it's gonna be unfair for for people to hear like. What if if you didn't enjoy it so much? Like you know, if you ask me what my score for this one is, I don't know what to tell you, because you know I'm I'm <laughs> gonna I'm gonna score you know I'm 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 gonna score one of my favorite you know blockbuster films the same way as this one. No way, right? You know you you, yeah. you know I wouldn't score like you know Captain America: The Winter Soldier the way <laughs> I score this one. So it's like you no, know it's it, no. it's gonna be. Yeah. Right, right, no. right, and both yeah. are good. Like you know, both are like, yeah. you know, good movies. Yeah. And it's gonna be impossible to score something like this because <laughs> he has fifth. Please understand that the the guy has fifty films, and if we're gonna, <laughs> if we're gonna, if we're gonna score it from one to ten, it's gonna be it's gonna be such a disservice to his movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see you again next week for 1979's Manhattan. The mm-hmm. first decade of Woody Allen is uh, almost uh, done, and we're gonna yeah. move on to his most experimental decade, which is the '80s, yes. which is gonna be very, very Ooh. exciting, I think. And uh, we're gonna meet Mia Farrow. Uh, oh, the muse <laughs> that's. Uh, his, his, I, I was thinking about this line, you know, when 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 talking about Mia Farrow, like Mia Farrow is my favorite Woody Allen muse. Like oh. even until today, like to this day, if you ask me what's your favorite, who's your favorite Woody Allen muse, I would say Mia Farrow. And it's mm. like, Mia Farrow is both the best and the worst thing that happened to Woody's <laughs> career. And you're going to find out what <laughs> I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but uh, I mean, to to everyone, please, please, please do get in touch with us if you have any other yeah. suggestions, if you have any other comments. Uh, big big shout out to Scotty Stravinsky who always yeah, engages Scotty. us. Yeah, yeah, who who gives us a lot of like his insight uh, on the on his views and gives us a, mo- a bunch of references. I'm sorry if. <laughs> William tries to get all of them, but I'm trying to yeah. not because I might get spoiled. <laughs> no, Q, Q will be spoiled. But I'm so happy yes. to know other people who have seen these things. <laughs> yes. And for now, are... we are saying good ma, uh, good night or good evening, good afternoon, good, afternoon. good morning <laughs> to wherever you are in the world, and uh, we'll see you again next week for Manhattan. That was today's episode of Woody Allen's Decades in Film podcast about the incredible filmography of one of the most prolific and most controversial filmmakers of our time. Join us again next week for another deep dive on the art of Woody Allen.